All right, hello. Just testing out this setup right now. I just stumbled into this setup. I wasn't really sure if this is gonna work. I mean, I was just really preparing for my online lesson, uh, piano lessons today. But it's not gonna, my students will not log in for maybe about 30 minutes from now. Uh, so it's better if we talk about something just uh, just for the heck of this video. So yeah, let's get started now. Piano, piano. All right, if you're a beginner and uh, want to play, want to learn piano, uh, first of all, you really need to commit. But when I say commit to learning, it doesn't mean you really have to commit full time, like, a, like a, an hour, two hours a day practice. No, that's not what I mean. I mean, you can commit maybe two to three minutes of your time every day. Is it possible? Is it possible for you? So if you have a piano hanging around, just laying in, in, in your space, that's working. It could be an 88 key. It could be shorter, like a 61 key. Uh, that's perfect, okay? Now, if it's working, everything's working. Now, this piano, what I have here, it's an electric piano, but it feels like a, a real acoustic piano. It's a Roland FP10. I'm not, I'm not affiliated with them, but it just happens to be my piano here. And uh, it feels very close to my acoustic piano upright downstairs. I have an acoustic piano. But of course, uh, the sound, of course, is different because it's coming out of a speaker, not like the acoustic piano that I have. The sound is coming out of uh, an actual string and uh, the soundboard of the piano. So there's a big difference in sound, of course. But here, what we have here, if you have an electric piano like this, you don't have to worry about tuning, maintaining your acoustic piano every year or every two, twice a year. Uh, when season changes this will maintain in tune all the time all you have to do is really maintain it with dust cleaning it up making sure you, you vacuum it while it's unplugged uh, cleaning the keys make sure you don't hit the keys too hard uh, so yeah so it's uh, there, there are pros and cons when you're uh, thinking of what piano uh, you want to you want to get uh, or what piano you have all right, so let's say you have a keyboard, a piano, electric piano, just like this or shorter. Uh, you'll find out that there, you'll notice the white keys and the black keys also. And if you really look at the black keys, there are groups, there's a pattern. Like here, for example, in the middle, you see here, there are two closer to each other, two keys closer to each other, and three closer to each other. And it happens all the way. So two, three, two, three, two, three. That's a pattern. Also on the left, three, two, three, two, three. Okay. So these could be what you can use for your visual markers. Okay. So first key that everybody learns when you're learning piano is uh, the middle C. It revolves around the middle C mostly when you're a beginner. Okay. So look for the middle two black keys on your piano. How do you know if you have an 88 key keyboard this is from the left or from the right it's the other way uh it's always four four two keys so for, what i mean is uh, there are two black keys here together there's another one here second one this is the third one this is the fourth one from the right okay that's your middle middle black key from the left side, you'll have one black key here. It's really part of the three black keys if you if it continues, but it's it's only up to here. The piano is only up to here. So there's a one black key here, that's usually part of the three black key group. Here's your second. Here's your two black key group. Okay, this is the first one. This is the second one. This is the third one, and this is the fourth one. So it's always the fourth. Uh, the fourth one from the left or from the right if you're using an 88 key okay keyboard how do you know if it's an 88 key keyboard yeah you go go look for those two black keys uh, it should be one two three four five six seven why seven seven because one two three four one two three four 
Okay, so it's not eight because we're counting this as the fourth one, the same thing. So it's seven, uh, two black keys. Okay, if you only have six two black keys, uh, three, four, oh, five, sorry, uh, oh, one, one, uh, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, six two black keys, right? You're you you'll you'll be an octave short. Um, oh, yeah, you'll be an octave short from the left, I think, okay, from the left. Your right side will always have these three black keys, okay, going on there. Uh, so, yeah, that's how you find your, your middle two black keys. Now, it's taking too long to explain that, that those black keys. So, let's go straight to middle C. This is middle C on the left side of the middle two black keys. The left one, go here. It's, it looks like an, uh, an L shape, a short L shape, if you think about it, see L. Okay, it's just a weird thing that I, I see. <laughs> but anyway, there's another L shape here. You might mistake that, but look at the three black keys. Look at the two black keys. This is the middle C. It, it'll sound like this, by the way. That's the sound of a middle C. So try that on your own, and if it sounds the same. If it sounds this... That's the that's the low C, that's a bass C. Move up one C here. If it sounds this way, that's another C, yes, but uh, go to the left. This is your C. And now you notice, oh, these are all Cs. Yeah, every key behind or on the left side of the two black keys are all Cs. Two black keys, C. Two black keys, C. Two black keys, C. Even down here. And down there. So there are all there are many Cs on your keyboards, okay? It's not just one C. It's a repeating pattern, right? So now you know where middle C is, you have to learn the musical alphabets, okay? Because we physically identified what C is. But the musical alphabets are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, only up to G. So we have seven letters of the musical alphabet. Uh, obviously, this is C, so that means you start on C. If we're going to the right, the pitch will go higher at a time. It increments, uh, not increments, but it goes higher. Going to the next C here, the you just move up the the musical alphabet letter. So if this is C, this is D, E, F, G. There's no up only up to G, right? So this key here beyond G to the right of G, it goes back to the letter A. So this is A, B, and makes sense. This is another C here. C, two black keys, C, two black keys, C. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. That's one octave. If you know that one octave. The octave here is the same, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. The octave here is the same, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. It's just a higher version, a higher version, an octave version of those uh, notes. So now you know it's just a repeating uh, pattern on the keyboards. See? So on the left side, it's the same thing, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now it's important to be able to recite the musical alphabet forward and very important also to recite it backward can you recite it backward it's not the whole alphabet from a to z anyway it's just up to g so recite it backwards can you say it along with me four three ready go g f e d c b a did you get it right g g f e d c b a so Practice that also backwards. In your, this is like a mental practice, okay, in your mind. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. If you can't memorize the whole thing backwards yet, two notes at a time. G, F, backwards. F, E. Or, uh, sorry, G, F, right? What's behind F? E, so E, D, C, B, A. C, B, A is easy. A, B, C, C, B, A, okay? So that's... That's, that is how uh, you memorize stuff in music, not the whole scale right away. You cut it into smaller chunks so your brain can co co uh, cope up right away. Or can uh, not really cope up, but your brain can memorize it easily if you're memorizing three notes only at a time. Or two or three notes at a time only. So, now we know though, those, uh, that concept about musical alphabets, and you know that this is C, you should make out 
be able to make out that this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, all these white keys are called the natural keys because there are the name of these natural keys are just as is. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The black keys are what we call the enharmonic keys. This is where you're going to find the sharps and the flats. When you think of sharp, it's like it, it's, 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 it, the note is going higher. Okay, it's raising up sharp. When you think of flat, it's like a flat tire. Your, your car is lower, lowered if you have a flat tire. Right? So same thing. Uh, sharps is getting higher. The pitch is going higher. Flat is going lower. On the keyboards, as you go to the right, your pitch is going higher. You go to the left, it's getting lower. Right? So if the black keys are the sharps and the flats, let's say your middle C is right here. If you want to know what this is, right beside middle C, that black key on the right, what do you think? That's C sharp. You add, you take the name of C and move it up here, but you add the, the sharp name, so C sharp, okay? Uh, after C sharp, there's a note natural key D, which is C, D. Guess what? This on the right side of D is D sharp. Next one is E. Now you see, you notice there's no black key between E and F, so there's no E sharp for now. Once so you want to go up, a half step from E, that's F right away. So there's no C sharp yet. Uh, e sharp yet, okay? Now F, there is a black key. This is F sharp. The natural G, G sharp. Natural A, A sharp. B, no B sharp because there's no black key. And it's C right away. I'll explain later on in a different video why there's no B sharp. And why is this very close, D and C? It's like they're, they're just a step away or a half step away, right? But C to D is like beyond the sharps, okay? Anyway, that's uh, we'll talk about that later on, maybe in a different video. But for now, this is for beginners, okay? So those are sharps going to the right. If you know one octave, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, no E sharp, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. It, ha it will repeat C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. Okay, those are the sharps. Remember, going up, it raises the note a little higher, a half step. We'll talk about half step later on. Uh, the flats is going to the left. So obviously, if you start on C, there's no C flat because there's no black key between C and B. So you start on B here. Let's take this higher B here. Let's take that. And then you go to the left. That, guess what? This is... A sharp, yes, this is A sharp, but if we're talking about flats, you came from B, this is B flat, okay? It was just also called A sharp. So, enharmonic means two names. These are the enharmonic notes, the black keys. So, if you're talking about A and you want to find A flat here, G, G flat, F, no F flat, E, E flat, D, D flat, C, no C flat. So, that's the, that's the concept of flats and sharps. And harmonic names, two names, natural keys. Okay, so hopefully this helps you out about piano. This is the basic keys, uh, white keys and, and harmonic keys. Okay, and also the musical alphabets and also the octaves, repeating patterns C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If I play them together, that's what you get. good okay so uh i guess i'll end my my live stream here uh this is just a sample stream uh just testing out this setup you see on the right side lower uh lower area of the screen zoom i was actually just uh uh in in my zoom meeting app and i'm just preparing for my lessons today uh for my piano student uh, in a few minutes, we'll be. I'll be the. I'll be in my lessons. But, so, hope this helps you out. I'll see you in the next one.